and welcome back to the channel. So, I wanted to do a follow-up on my BYOG, Build Your Own Guitar, Flying V. I built this, uh, God, it's like maybe as much as two years ago now. God, I think it was like two years ago. Uh, and at the time, I wanted to replace my Les Paul Custom because I was worried about damaging it live. And I wanted something... Uh, like cool for the stage and that's exactly what a flying V is to me it's like one of the coolest looking guitars and I'm back in the throes of another Hendrix obsessing period of my life where I'm listening to almost exclusively his music learning how to play the RU Experience record uh, Andy Aladort is the instructor of that what an amazing uh, video that is and uh, so I'll like well Strat is my favorite guitar right now uh, but I sure do like the way a flying V looks it's fantastic and this guitar was a labor of love and I learned a lot I really feel grateful uh, to for building this guitar because uh, I've pretty much gone through every high and low with it when I first built it uh, when I first got the guitar uh, you know I'd never built a guitar before and I didn't really build it it was basically assembling it because this is a kit guitar and what they do is uh, you know I think this kit doesn't even exist anymore they don't mess with these flying V's uh, probably because uh, I would assume these are a little trickier, like things go wrong, and I'll tell you a little bit about that. But they don't even make this one anymore. But I would assume that uh, this is very similar to like one of their uh, Les Paul Jr. builds or uh, any of the Gibson style builds uh, where you have a set neck, you know. And uh, so what I ended up doing was I used hide glue. I got all into it, read about it and everything, and decided hide glue was uh, going to be the best uh, vibration and sound transfer. That was my philosophy. I have no idea if that's true or not. But the thing I'll say about this guitar is that it does vibrate and resonate like crazy. Like when you're holding it, it's just really alive. It's the most alive guitar I have as far as that goes. And I attribute that to, it's a you know solid hunk of mahogany or whatever this really is. It's called uh, African mahogany, whereas I think mahogany came, comes from Honduras, the good stuff, like the Gibson stuff. I think this is actually another type of wood. It's just similar to mahogany. I, I can't remember, but it is a nice piece of wood as far as, you know, the looks of it and everything, and the sound is quite good. You'll see in a second, uh, but it really... Uh, came out night what I really learned from building this guitar that really excites me is the wood tone stain uh, that is a brilliant product uh, because if you want to build like a kick guitar or you've got like an old beater guitar or you want to refinish something you know uh, it does a beautiful job and anybody can do it you just apply the stain with a rag I've got some videos several videos on this channel I do a, a green surf guitar I did with a friend uh, we made a guitar and gave it to a kid, uh, and that was fun. That was a, a wood tone surfer girl. It was like a green color. This is the, I forgot what this one's called, uh, ch a cherry or something like that. And it's, it's the Gibson, you know, color. The SG and Flying V color, they use that aged cherry. And you can make it as thinned out as you want, or make it, you know, like super dark or whatever. Uh, I really like the way these kind of like age immediately. Like if you're into the aging look and like thin finish look, like the thin skin thing, uh, that's what this really does beautifully. And I love the way the neck is worn. I don't know if you can tell, but the neck is way more worn out than the finish wise. It's way lighter than the rest of the guitar. I don't know if you can see from there, but this thing has a nice like really flamey like active uh, finish. Uh, the wood figuring is like very like active 3D like and then this guy gets really fade I can picture this just like fading to natural it's on its way already and then right here where it doesn't have the usual Gibson style pick guard it leaves the space open it's more like a Jackson th in that way uh, this has gotten worn out which I think is awesome anywhere where my body touches it it wears out faster and then I just kinda let it beat around because the guitar uh, has given me so much trouble. Uh, so I built the guitar and um, originally I had a Duesenberg trim on it and that Duesenberg trim uh, for me was a big drag, a big disappointment. Uh, I should give that to somebody. I've got it. I've got the bits, you know, and got it in a box, but I'm not going to use it. Uh, 
But I had that on here, and the guitar was super funky when I first built it. I had the a different nut on there that wasn't cut right. I had the Duesenberg trim, which is all jacked up and wacky. I had uh, some Guitar Madness pickups in there that were P90 copies. Those, uh, what are those things? Not P90 copies, but the humbucker size P90. It's called a P91, maybe. Uh, it's like shaped like a humbucker. And those can sound really good, uh, but and these sounded okay. Should give those away as well. Uh, but they were too polite. You know, I always think of a flying V. I used to listen to like Judas Priest and Scorpions when I was a kid, and I always thought of uh, that uh, flying V being like a little gnarlier, you know. So I went to the humbuckers, which is by far the best thing in in this guitar. These are Gadow G A D O W pickups. Uh, I forgot the guy's first name. Uh, but he's been out of the industry for a while. He was a builder, uh, built S-Type and uh, single guitars, and he wound these amazing pickups. These things sound really nice. They're like PAF wound, like a low wind. Uh, I think they come in at like seven something, but they sound really nice. And when I replaced those kind of cheap pickups uh, with, the, with these, everything changed. Uh, then the other thing uh, is that I had to do the nut a bunch of times, uh, mainly because the nut it came with was complete garbage, but it was formed for the neck much better. And when you look up here at, this, at the nut, it's just ridiculous. Uh, it looks terrible, but it is right now. It does work. Uh, and it's what I would do now if I was to redo the, the nut, knowing what I know now, is you can take a guitar like this, and I know that I'm going to be doing, you know, the nut's going to go right here. You put a piece of sandpaper, you know, on the back of the neck, obviously the slick side, and then you help shape that nut right here on the neck so you get the correct radius from the bottom as opposed to just trying to carve, you know, get those nut slots deep enough. So you get a little, you get it closer to the shape of the guitar neck by sanding it down from the bottom, like, and you can use the actual neck to really form it. Then place it in there with some glue and then get these nut slots correct because if you don't get these nut slots correct on a V, especially this flying V, see how the E's are splayed way out? I mean, that's a, that's a massive angle to come off a nut like this. It's not a good design, honestly. Yeah, it's bad. Uh, because I think Gibsons are a little closer in. That, that looks really splayed out. So the guitar never really uh, would intonate. Um, and I went through a couple bridges. This is all the... Uh, Asian spec, you know, where it's metric. But I got this locking bridge by Goto, which is A+. Plus. Highly recommend those. Uh, and I got a Goto stop piece. Uh, the other cool thing I did was a little uh, kill switch. And we got the three pickups. It's uh, 50s wiring, which I'm not sure that I love on a V. I love it on a Les Paul. But uh, the way it intertwines everything, it's hard to... Uh, make everything shut up uh, because they're all kind of work together, uh, which I find annoying. So the kill switch has come in handy. It's an intermittent kill switch. I got it to have like that, dit, 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 you know, that machine gun effect, rat tat tat effect, Morse code. Uh, but um, it's also useful. You just hold it down for a second to get it quiet, you know, in between tunes or like if you're doing something with your amp, you just hold it down, dead quiet. Let up, go. And the reason I like the intermittent one, even though it is annoying to have to hold it down, is if it's just a kill switch, like turn it off, it's a little boring. It's nice to have it be where you can turn it into an effect. You can turn it into an effect if it's one of the st stationary up and down ones, but it doesn't quite have the machine gun effect of this intermittent one. Okay, so inside I have orange drops, uh, CTS pots, 500K, uh, tusk nut, I upgraded the tuners uh, with all parts. I think they were Goto as well. Yeah, it was definitely Goto. I remember now. There's a video about it. But they're Goto mini tuners, and I put the I put the old ends back on because the mini ones look weird. But these tuners are good because I'll tell you about the BYOG. They're super nice, and I think they those kits are fine. And the thing about a kit guitar is that it, if it doesn't turn out to be a great guitar, you just embrace the disaster. You know, that's my philosophy. What I've learned. And at first, I thought this guitar was going to be a disaster and it was going to be unplayable and ultimately like wall art because it does look great, you know. 
but I want it to sound great and play great. And I realized, is, I realized that flying Vs are tricky sometimes to get them to intonate, to get them to play in tune. Uh, it's a Gibson style, so the headstock is, could easily break. It definitely feels a little, it doesn't feel uh, tough like my Strat or Tele feels. You know, those are the ultimate tools for me. You just go out and bang on them and you just can't beat them down. This one feels a little more like I'm holding, you know, something uh, more delicate. You know, it just has more of a delicate feel. Uh, but I love the wood tone stain. It's just so cool the way it's so thin and just you really feel like you're in with the wood, you know. It's hard to explain, uh, but I love it. And um, I just love flying bees. I'll probably end up with a Gibson. I'm almost positive. And I bet these pickups will go in it because a lot of times I, I look for project guitars, you know, like where maybe just a husk. If I could stumble into one of those, I could yank these pickups and put it in the Gibson. But for now, I'm going to rock this baby. So let me just show you what it's sounding like now. The pickups were a major, major improvement over the, uh, the other ones I had going. <laughs> Hopefully it's in tune, let's find out. here with this hide glue and it's just like barely in there I mean not really it's in there nice and solid but um, hide glue is like a French way to go with furniture and stuff and the reason they used it is because if you get it really wet it, it loosens up and you can literally you know break things apart and reset them so it's like a temporary you know uh, the French always thought of all their furniture as being temporary and uh, mutable they never f considered it finished uh, and so, hey, maybe that's what this guitar is. It's never going to get finished. <laughs> for me I can get the real nasty stuff usually beginnings of shows and ends of shows you know end up sounding like this <laughs> pretty far and the bridge up as high as I can get it 
because they're you know low wind they don't get too gnarly and uh, I want to get as much gnarl out of them as possible but because they're low output they don't get that that super high gain like fuzz tone on top uh, that I'm trying to avoid alright so let me just show you uh, what the neck pickup can do <laughs> is that it's pretty pretty good it's not a great guitar but it is a usable good guitar and I think that the process was really really useful uh, I learned how to do a finish and after this finish I did another one and I did shellac on my strat and this is what gave me the confidence to do it I learned about nuts uh, and I you know can't say that I did the greatest job, but I have done three or four on this guitar now uh, to try to get it right. Probably this is the third one that was that I worked on. So I learned how to slot, you know, the nut and everything. And I wouldn't have ever done that if I hadn't tried to do this. Uh, I learned a lot, and I all the mistakes, all the things that went wrong, like the rattling bridge, like because. The main thing about these kick guitars, it's not just BYOG, it's any of them. Uh, if you get a kick guitar on eBay, if you find some company, even the good companies, most of them put garbage electronics in it. So all you're really getting, you know, what I really bought was a, some, a guitar neck and a guitar body. Everything else, and the pick guard, I use the pick guard. The poker chip down here, the pick guard, the pickup rings, uh, but and this is, no, everything else is different. Stop piece, bridge, pickups, obviously, uh, a new nut, new tuners. I did see, uh, keep the truss rod cover, so all of the bits, you know. But other than that, it got switched out because it was garbage and not usable. But, once again, it's a great 
thing to try to do because you'll learn about finishing, you'll learn about electronics, you'll learn about how guitars, you know, come together. It gives you a new appreciation of uh, some of our favorite brands. But um, I'm just glad that I've been able to ride this roller coaster because many, many times I gave up on it. It was like, it's, never, it's not going to happen. It's wall art, you know, essentially. And uh, that really bothered me. Uh, and I wanted to make it play. And I don't think it's the greatest guitar in the world, but I think it sounds good. It looks great. And uh, it, uh, it works. So uh, I wanted to update it because, and I wanted to update myself because I'd pretty much kind of given up on it. And recently, just tweaking uh, the action, uh, I, I tried to get it really high, like my Strat, that didn't work. It doesn't want to be there. Couldn't get it to intonate like that. Uh, then I got it down and then working on the nut. So now I've got it where it's kind of like standard, like, you know, what Gibson would give you right out of the factory. Uh, maybe a little higher. Uh, yeah, a little higher, a little higher. Uh, but pretty much standard kind of Gibson setup is where I ended up uh, getting it. And it works. It finally intonates. Uh, and that's a long story. I don't know that it was routed perfectly and also the way the nut was put in, uh, I don't know if I was ever going to get it. So it's been a really good, uh, you know, experiment. Uh, and if things go wrong, uh, you know, embrace the disaster and make the most of it because uh, it's all just wood and it can be fixed and worked on and manipulated. Next time.